there's certain things we have to be very cautious of uh, that I don't think has been clearly delineated in modern spiritual circles. So one aspect of this is that all three Dantian must be fully activated and fully unified. That means that there must be full activation of the sexual forces, and they have to be integrated into the healthy emotion, the healthy mind, a healthy united state. Because the sexual energy, as understood in the Chinese tradition, is the jing. It is the core densified life energy. And once you pass through puberty, it gets expressed through the sexual forces. So that has to be brought to its highest level of intensity in order to nourish the entire human energy body but also has to be integrated with all these other aspects or it can become something toxic. Yeah, perturbed. So there's an aspect of this that, number one, there were the problems in the European tradition of the overly sex-negative uh, Christian tradition, particularly within Catholicism, that led to the suppression of healthy sexual feeling and expression in a way that it then will become toxic. If you have to hide it, right. then, or it's like something that is described as being somehow satanic, then the reason for all of the black magic circles and the black mass and all these things that developed within the Catholic Church among the priesthood is because they didn't have a healthy sexual outlet. It's going to take a detrimental Form. Yeah, how much shame you're going to create when you think you're going to burn in hell for eternity for <laughs> having such a natural biological process happen. Because someone coming from like a South Sea island that was not sexually repressed would never think to like hold a black mass where they're doing all these incredibly crazy things. But that's because they got mentally programmed that, oh, if you're going to claim your sexual energy, now it's satanic and now it's linked to all these other things. But a healthy person would never make those associations. So that was some of the problems that came into the Western tradition is that the sex negative aspect led to something absolutely fundamental becoming pathological and toxic. Another aspect, and this also occurs with the Eastern tradition, is something that is uh, known as premature purification. And that's not well known in spiritual circles today. Premature purification you will find in many traditions, also in the East, in which a person begins to go on a very powerful, dedicated spiritual path, but they're doing what's known as purification in place. That means they haven't fully lived through their full sexual nature and sexual experiences, which include sexual exploration and all types of experiences. They haven't really lived through that yet. And by purifying in place, they're in a sense suppressing that and what might be at an early adolescent stage of sexual development stays there and gets covered up with all these layers of higher spiritual development. But then when they get taken out of their spiritual ashram context, and this happened with quite a few Eastern masters that came to the U.S. in the 60s and 70s, they had developed... Certain, like certain lamas and different things also. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is true for Tibetans, Indians, many Eastern traditions. Once they begin to come to the U.S., and many of the U.S. disciples had somewhat naive expectations of them, the thing is that there was the expectation that if this person has real siddhas, real powers, then somehow they're a perfect human being. That's not the case at all. You can have all kinds of siddhas and still have all types of uncompleted processes in your own energy body. So you had these masters that often had real abilities and higher states of consciousness. But when they went from their ashram environments in the Himalayas to being surrounded by nubile young women or men in, in uh, a Western context, then it became all types of improper sexual manipulation of students. And that's simply because they were faced with temptations that the purification in place brought out the parts of themselves that weren't allowed to develop to a, a higher extent. So actually one of the things I think is a, a great benefit of the modern Western independent spiritual path that we're seeing today is a 
often not clearly defined understanding, but somewhat in the background, that we do need to have that prodigal son or daughter stage of experiencing and experimenting with the sexual energy because it's the core life force until it becomes fully integrated. And that even people that are highly advanced in all kinds of ways, you'll if you actually get to know them, you'll find that there's all kinds of weird sexual stuff they're still working out. Partly because you can experiment with it today. And in many of our past incarnations, that was very suppressed and very difficult to work with. So that's something I think people need to be aware of up front is the challenge of premature purification of purification in place. I very rarely hear any discussion of it. Uh, and the understanding that just because someone has certain advanced spiritual abilities, it doesn't mean they've worked through all these core issues because the sexual energy then gets very tied into the emotional energy. It has to do with all types of issues of self-worth and of the desire nature and all of these types of things. And then it's going to be connected to the thought forms that we have around our sexuality, other people's sexuality. And again, once people begin to get certain level of uh, spiritual knowledge, spiritual ability, some siddhas, as I've spoken of in other places, there's one of the first challenges on the path is the path, the challenge of the uh, falling prey to a premature ego inflation and thinking you're more advanced than you are, then starting your own little guru group, and then maybe it was fairly clean in the beginning, but then as you get more power, more people give their power to you, then all of those unaddressed things come out, sexual manipulation. It's one of those things that you see so often that at this point, any person involved in spiritual work just needs to be have a mature attitude toward it, that this is just because someone's spiritually advanced in certain ways doesn't mean that they've completed all these other developmental processes. And that's very true emotionally and it's very true sexually. Even if their thought forms are fantastic, these two centers require a lot of, of work. And we have the opportunity today to explore with them in ways that were very difficult to do in many previous incarnations. Mm -hmm.